I know I brought my Holy Spirit again, and there was many who who received the Holy Spirit. And so that's what I did. I talked about the fact that I really moved with us. The Lord's going to bring the Holy Spirit today, and then this, etc. Went to the message. I probably preached about 20 minutes, and I was tired, y'all. Uh, yeah. And uh, after I finished preaching, uh, I said, it's time for the altar call. And, and I, when I was saying, it's time, uh, people start coming to the altar before I get, I get out the altar call. They start coming. I'm like, okay, wow. Uh, and so I met Mike. Uh, and uh, Michael was from the homeless shelter, told him, you know, Jesus is going to move the Holy Spirit uh, today. And uh, uh, so I'm going to lay my hands on you. I'm going to lay hands on you. The Holy Spirit is going to come on you. And so I, I said, I lay hands on, on, on Mike. You just start talking in tongues. Mm -hmm. uh, that was powerful. I, I literally looked at him and I said, okay, so we're going to do this today. <laughs> <laughs> so that was powerful. I walked over to, uh, to Brittany and uh, started told Brittany, God's going to build the Holy Spirit today. And I went over to her. Uh, I said, I'll lay my hands on you. I, I literally was raising my hand in the air, and Brittany started speaking in tongues before I even touched her. I said, so I, and I said, okay, we're doing this today. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really awesome. We went with Nikki, we had Nikki too, and I prayed uh, for Nikki. I told her the same thing, I was going to pray for her, lay my hands on you. And I, I touched her head, and Nikki went forward. She uh, fell down like, like this, you know, hands out, face forward. I, I didn't get, it happened so fast, I didn't get a chance to catch her. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I, I, I got down there on my the knees where, where she was. She was speaking in tongues uh, when I got down there. Uh, and it was awesome. She she literally rolled over and started doing like this as she's speaking in tongues, like pointing her mouth like that. That's the devil. Do you hear this? Do you hear this? And uh, so that was incredible. We had so many people who were healed uh, during the, the service as well. Uh, so God is amazing. Uh, and I just, I'm, I'm just like super pumped right now. Let me tell you all uh, that the revival is happening. God is doing something unique. If you know someone that needs to be saved, you know someone that, that wants the Holy Spirit, that wants to be baptized, get them here. Do it now. Uh, God is doing something extraordinary. Don't wait. Uh, just go ahead and bring them. Uh, God's going to do something. He's doing something very powerful. I admonish you. Uh, dig, uh, dig that. Uh, this, dig the trench. The Bible tells us that if we'll dig, it said there won't be, this is in, in, in 1st Kings, I'll do this on a later day, uh, there won't be signs. You won't have signs for wind or or rain. God said, I'm just going to send water. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, oh, your glory. Your, your sign for the revival is you dig it. Okay? Don't look up and try to find is it's the time to rain, is it time for, for the wind. No, just dig. God mm -hmm. said, I'm sending the water there. Uh, and so, uh, if you want God to do it, then you gotta you gotta put forth uh, the effort. Start digging. You know, uh, put your sword down, uh, trying to fight people, and put your shield away, trying to defend yourself. Go pick up a shovel. Uh, dig deep and dig wide. <laughs> Glory to God. He's doing something very powerful, and I can't wait to see what the Lord is going to do. Uh, and uh, so I'm waiting for that. Now, now uh, as I'm saying that, I remember you always said to me, you know, Pastor, you you, you don't need to buy this place when you. Uh, uh, when you're going out, well, um, this Thursday I am close by, <laughs> uh, and uh, so on the table over there is the information for uh, war. Um, speaking this Thursday for uh, Bishop Nelson Senior uh, for their, their war conference. So it's on the table over there. Uh, it's a Thursday night service at 7 uh, p.m. The directions are over there as well. Uh, I can find out that it's a communion night. I am so honored uh, to be able to they would ask me. You know, it's on the platform of all, all those big guys. I'm like, come on, Jesus. So <laughs> I'm so honored to do that. And uh, so I'd be uh, super blessed. If I could see your face there, uh, you would bless my heart uh, tremendously. Just to see you there uh, would bless my heart. Uh, and not just that, but to know that you're there and you're praying for me uh, would be great as well. So if you can make it, I really appreciate that. Again, the, the flyers over there and the directions of the place which over there. It's a set of service on Thursday. And so, guys, I thank you guys so much um, for that. Let's get started. And uh, I'll, I'll rehearse that announcement again, uh, again to you. Uh, but that will be the script of Williams lesson. We're in uh, the uh, third chapter of Colossians. Uh, those who are watching online, uh, hit that share button. If you're watching uh, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Live, hit that share button. Tag somebody in this. You are going to be blessed. If you ever wondered how to live the, this life, uh, this lesson today is going to really help you learn how to live this life, what to do. It's very practical. Um, that's what these verses are. And you'll, you'll find yourself being able to better live and do what you are supposed to do. Uh, yes, uh, Trina, she said, can we get the information? 
Uh, two. All right. Uh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Uh, we have one other people here. Well, uh, you can do it. You go. All right. So we'll, we're gonna post it. Somebody's gonna, somebody gonna post it on online uh, in, in the chat, so you'll see the information for the the church location and also time. Uh, we'll post it on, online uh, for you. That way you'll, you'll see it, and that way you guys can come. Uh, out as well. All right? Wonderful. Uh, let's get started. It's the third chapter of Colossians, verse uh, 5 uh, through 17. That is the, the word we're tracking today. <laughs> the ascended life is a life that, that is from uh, uh, above. Uh, oh, uh, bless you, uh, Pastor Barry. I'm a good friend. I'm a good man. And uh, I'm going to bring over to you as well. Yeah. Um, and the life of the above, we, we are, we, we're, it's like it's, it's above. And we're, we're, we've been made alive, we've been raised up, and we're seated uh, in heavenly uh, places. We're seated in heavenly places. Uh, therefore, since we're, we're there, the uh, Colossians we learned last week, we're supposed to seek the above things. We're supposed to set our heart on, on the above things. Uh, see, our heart should be always about the kingdom of God, uh, mm -hmm. the direction of the kingdom of God, the, the lifestyle of the kingdom of God. To set uh, means to, to seek means to go about desires is to to strive earnestly for uh, to, uh, to 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 set means to exercise the mind to entertain uh, the mind. So we are supposed to uh, entertain our mind, exercise our mind. We're supposed to be uh, interest ourselves in the ways of the kingdom. The believer should, is supposed to live a life uh, that is consumed with the kingdom of God. We're not supposed to walk after the world. But we're supposed to, the Bible says, to walk after Christ. And in walking after Christ is not so much as putting one foot in front of the other in walking, but rather it indicates to, uh, to be occupied with. Uh, and so we should be busy with the kingdom of God. Uh, it means to be controlled or to also to order your behavior. So uh, uh, our lives should be controlled and ordered by uh, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God should be your lifestyle, your, your lifestyle. All that we do uh, should be uh, driven towards that. Constantly walking, habitually walking out the kingdom of God. Therefore, in order to do so, if our life is supposed to be changed, then that means uh, we have to have a new birth. The new birth comes out of, uh, the, the new life comes out of the new birth. If we have the new birth, uh, then we must have a new heart. Uh, so our mind must be new. Our emotions must be new. Why? After all, we are uh, new creatures. We're new creatures. And if we're new creatures in Christ, uh, we're supposed to demonstrate and operate as the new man. The only way for that to occur is to put off the old man of sin and to put on the new man of godliness and righteousness, which is after uh, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And so in, in so doing, when we, uh, when we uh, walk in this way, and we, we strive in this fashion, uh, then we find ourselves actually demonstrating what Christ uh, would have for us uh, to be. Today, uh, in Colossians, we're going to learn about uh, the walk with Christ, what that looks like for us, and how to better be able to uh, walk it out uh, with Him. Now, as we're engaging that to kind of rehearse and bring our mind back up to speed, as to where we were on last week. Uh, what do you remember from uh, last week's uh, lesson? Somebody? Yes, sir. The believer is hidden in Christ. Okay. We're hidden in Christ. Uh, yes, ma'am. Every believer should be optimistic. Okay, absolutely. Good. Yes. Uh, Jesus wanted us to not worry about tomorrow for has his own time, but to worry about today. Okay. Yes. Um, this is Seeing that you have 
put off the old man with uh, his deeds. The uh, believer's new life is in uh, Christ Jesus. And we've stressed this uh, several times. Uh, being uh, in Christ, we are positioned uh, in him. Having this new place and this new position in Christ requires or mandates that our mind uh, be new uh, as well. Um, when we were studying the previous series, we dealt with, uh, in Philippians, and we, one of the scriptures we read was Philippians 2 and verse 5. It says, let this mind, which was added to into your opinion, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the, the same attitude that Christ had, the same interest that Christ had, the same opinion that Christ had is the same interest, opinion, or attitude that we're also supposed to have. Uh, we're told in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, and that's interesting because what it, what it shows us is that our mind should be transformed and our mind should be uh, renewed. So we would be, uh, we can prove what a good example in the perfect will uh, of God. And so the believer's mind uh, should be uh, transformed and the believer's mind uh, should be uh, renewed. Uh, let's see, if you just in one of those slides, or you, uh, one, just put the, the uh, address so they can see that they want to scroll down. Yes. Uh, just do that. Okay, thanks. Uh, now, uh, so transform and, and also renew. Uh, do this for me, please. Uh, lay your hand on, on, on your head, and we're going to say this, this, this simple prayer uh, together. Uh, say, Lord, Lord transform, transform my mind. My mind. Say, Lord, Lord renew, renew my mind. My mind. Yeah. Our mind should be transformed, and our mind uh, should be uh, renewed. Daily, our mind should be transformed. Daily, our mind should be renewed. When we get into transform, uh, it means to be, it's, it's to change, it's to transfigure. Uh, when we get into the word renew, uh, renew is to, to, make, to be made new, to be adjusted, to be changed, or re regenerated. Uh, that Greek word transform, metamorpho, is a two-part word. Uh, meta uh, means uh, with or, or mid or after, and then the morpho uh, indicates fashion or, or form. So the idea of being transformed is uh, with a new fashion, or after a, a, a new form. And for most of us, when you hear the word uh, metamorpho, we immediately think about metamorphosis, mm -hmm. and you're, you're thinking about the caterpillar uh, uh, turning into the butterfly. That's one of our immediate things that we, that we think of. Uh, consider the, the caterpillar with, with its body mass can only scoot across the ground. Uh, it can climb in, into different places, but it never can uh, be able to float and, and get into places that the butterfly is able to do. It has to go through a change where its body mass and its form is completely changed so that it's able now to do things it was restricted before, it's able now to do things that it was restrained from before, and now there's no limits on now where it's able uh, to fly. And it's interesting because if the believer is going to uh, be transformed, as it was the butterfly, we've got to drop the, the mass of who we were, thank you Jesus, and to be able now to uh, go to that, that higher elevation. We've got to leave the lower level and the lower level behavior with its body mass behind to take on the new level, uh, which is higher, which is greater. Uh, a complete uh, transformation. The Bible tells us, Adam is of the earth. Christ is from above. And so we have to decide where, where will you decide to operate? Will you be as Adam, which is from below, or will you be as Christ, which is from uh, above? Uh, there should be a distinct transformation. Uh, the word also indicates transform. Uh, the idea behind it is to move from one cross to the other. So that is to say, you know, if there's an island here and an island here, if you live here, and there's a body of water uh, that separates to the other island, uh, you've got to be transported from this one place to get to there. There's a complete transformation that must take place. You and I have got to decide, uh, will I continue to live in this way, or will I be transported or transferred now to the new form, the new place where I am uh, supposed to be? Not only are we to be transformed, but we're also supposed to be 
our mind is supposed to be renewed, which is a readjustment. Uh, it is to be made new. It is to uh, be regenerated. The reality of brothers and sisters, sin has drastically affected how we think. Uh, sin has altered your original uh, thought pattern so much that now uh, you were born with a flawed and a marred way of thinking. And so we spend our time having psychologists uh, and sociologists uh, trying to study uh, our patterns. Uh, and so the psychologist is looking at uh, your behavior, uh, how you process things, how you uh, interact with sociologists. It's, it spends this time trying to say, well, uh, here's how people be, uh, act in groups and here are their behavior patterns. And so now uh, we're constantly studying the interactions uh, among people, trying to find ways to better the depravity in the human mind. And unfortunately, we're doing it doing without the concept of what the scripture actually had to say, or better yet, the manufacturer actually had to say about your mind. And so then when you, uh, you align yourself with, with Freud or with, with Maslow, and they're giving you these concepts, and now you're, uh, and with whoever you decide to uh, adapt to, the reality is you're learning their perspective so that your thought processes will be limited by their perception uh, uh, of life. But the truth is, uh, their mind is as flawed, they're not free thinkers, uh, and uh, they're limited by uh, the skewed concept that came uh, from them. And unfortunately, when we learn their behavior, we're, we are as skewed as uh, they are. We've got to decide, you know, uh, let's take on the concepts of what the scripture has to say. Because after all, and what is the number more, it is the creator that has, has formed us and has made us. Let's decide to take on the mindset uh, of Christ. Uh, uh, our behavior, our minds, were, were, were futile in the past. Our understanding was, was darkened, meaning then, when we comprehended something, our imagination, our, our, even our deep thought uh, was darkened. We could not see out. So we were, uh, uh, our own thought uh, had us groping around to try to understand, and sadly, mm. we thought within our own self mm. that what we thought uh, yeah. was deep. Now, here's what's funny to me, you know, uh, I've, I've been around, so I, I, let me just say this, I have, um, I, I've never smoked weed before, but I've been around people who, who do, uh, because of my position, you know, uh, and so folks will come to me and, and, and they'll talk, and it's always interesting, because you know, uh, when, when people smoke weed, they, they think that what they have to say is so deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are deep. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm cracking up because I'm thinking, like, if you heard yourself right now, you'd be like, you are not as deep as you think. <laughs> but you can't tell them that, and that, oh man, that's some deep stuff. Like, no, bro, you have no idea what's coming out of your mouth. Right? But you think you're deep. Yeah. But the sad reality is, uh, we are blinded by, right. uh, or, or darkened by, our own thoughts, not realizing that there is a greater clearness that comes from God. The reality is this. When the light of God and the light of his word shines in on our mind, then we realize how obscured uh, we really were in life. We realize, well, wait a minute, my life was really messed up. Yeah. The light of his word began to shine in and show that, do you see this area over there? Do you see uh, how messed up that was? Do you see how ruined you were over there? Because the light begins to show the reality of what's happening within uh, the individual. So consequently, we were alienated from God uh, through ignorance, and the, our heart uh, was uh, blinded. Uh, we were calloused over. Uh, we had uh, in our, our, our mind, we felt like uh, we were uh, there. But the truth is, uh, we, are, uh, we were perverted in our thinking. We lacked uh, sensitivity towards God, so therefore, uh, we developed uh, sensuality and goodness and, and greed. It was uh, corrupting us our old life was without any concern uh, for personal standard or, or even uh, any social ways uh, because the word of God was not being shaped uh, within us. We were perverted in our own ways. Uh, so it takes the reality of the word of God to get us back in alignment and to help us to actually think clear uh, like we were and like we are supposed to. Therefore, uh, we need to be transformed in our mind. The truth is, when you come to Christ, uh, your mind, your life, 
your behavior, everything is supposed to change. Say it simply, okay? That means uh, when you were saved, now you don't talk the same way that you used to talk. Your thoughts are supposed to be different. You don't engage people the way that you, you used to. Uh, your culture uh, becomes different now. Uh, so if you're still thinking the same, that means either uh, one, you really weren't saved, or mm -hmm. two, you have not allowed the word of God to transform your mind and renew uh, your mind because your mind should be renewed to the point that now you're, you're talking differently, you're thinking differently, uh, your, your emotions or your behavior uh, is different as well. How so? Through the finished work of the cross. Jesus has destroyed the work of the devil. Therefore, he's put those things down and even raised up to a higher level. He is. Christ should be the subject of your life because he is our life. In other words, he is your sphere. Uh, he's a center. You should be studying his behavior. You should be studying his character. You should be studying uh, his nature. You should be taking on his uh, likeness on a daily basis. Not so much with the paraphernalia of what would Jesus do, but rather uh, taking on now the likeness of Christ. And we're going to see more today what that actually entails. Jesus Christ never sinned uh, in life, neither did he teach the sin life. Therefore, then, if we take on the life of Christ, we should not be living a sinful life. He never lived in sin. He never taught a, a sinful life. So when we come into, into Christ having his life, we don't take on, neither do we participate in, that the sinful life. Uh, the new life, then, requires three things. Three actions must take place in every believer. Number one, you've got to put off the old man. Number two, you've got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And number three, you've got to put on uh, the, the new man, which is Christ. Think of it like this. Uh, uh, you guys are, are, are hygienic, and I, and I love coming to Bible studies. You know, uh, I can stand here with you all, and I'm not having to uh, you know, turn my nose away because uh, the room smells very pleasant. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, as hygienic uh, as you are, we still appreciate that. Uh, that means you have not only passed by the water, you've gone through the water. Yeah. Now, I, I say that because, and also we, we, we joke with it, uh, most of us come to something about you. Uh, that tells me that uh, you, when you take off your old garments, you're going to uh, bathe yourself. And that also says to me, you're not putting back on old clothes. It's letting me know uh, that you're not putting on, on soiled garments because you know that your soiled clothes uh, are going to uh, uh, augment wow. that, that fresh cleanliness that you had coming out of, the, out of the shower. You spent too much money, you know, on your fragrance of, uh, uh, you know, bath and body works. <laughs> You, you, you took that time, you know, and, and you, you bought those, uh, the, the, those things to cleanse yourself so that therefore, once you're, you're cleansed, you're not putting back on, on, on soiled clothes uh, because you know that the soiled garment that you put on is now going to alter that, that the wonderful fragrance that you now have. Uh, the first, the natural, and the spiritual. If we don't put on old garments after being cleansed in the natural, then why should we pick on our old ways after having been cleansed by Christ. If we know uh, that soiled garments after being cleansed in the natural uh, cause a, a, a putrid smell to come uh, from us, then what do you think happens when you do the same thing in the spirit? It alters the fragrance of God. And Paul talks about that we carry his fragrance throughout the entire earth. So then uh, we alter God's fragrance in the earth if we keep putting on the old man. Therefore, our life becomes putrid because we are taking a cleansed man and we're putting it on old ways, which is altering the fragrance of God uh, in the earth. Therefore, this, it becomes what was supposed to be fragrant, becomes a stench now, and we, are, uh, we, are, we smell in the nostrils of God, and the reality is we really stink in the world uh, as well uh, because we've taken the wonderful fragrance, which is Christ, and we've altered it with a debased way uh, of living. So, verses 5 and 9 of, of Colossians 3 actually lays out for us uh, things that we're supposed to uh, put off. Do me a favor, please. Look at verse number 6 
uh, of the third chapter uh, of Colossians. Verse number six is what I want you to see here. Uh, and it, it tells you something, that on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. Now, here's my point in, in that. If somehow you think that, you know, God understands it. He knows my heart. You know, uh, God knows I'm, I'm, I'm just struggling. Uh, you know, so he, since he knows me, I'm, I'm, I'm a work uh, in progress. God bless you. Uh, but please understand something. That you, your work in progress is mandated that God comes to judge you. Yeah. It's because of our, our sinfulness that Christ has to bring his wrath into the earth. It's because that we don't change our behavior and sinfulness. He has to judge us. So uh, although we, we would want to excuse ourselves with the idea of, you no, know, uh, God knows me, he knows my heart, he knows, he knows. I, I really love him, I've just got, I just got this little crutch, and I got, I got this little weakness, and I just, I just, got, I just got to live. And so he didn't take it away, you know, I'm just going to, uh, I'm about to help you because he's not taking it away, he's going to tell you what to do, and we'll talk about it in just a second. So uh, it's because of our sinfulness, our sinful nature, our inability to break free from those things, that he has to bring judgment into the earth. Uh, look at verse number five. Verse number five now. If you're reading King James, verse five says mortify. If you're reading ESV or NIV, it says put to death. Uh, this is, verses five through nine of Colossians three, is a violent passage of scripture. It's a violent passage of scripture. Uh, and I said it for, for this reason. Um, he's not saying, you know, take your sin off, hold it up neatly, and put it, over, put it away. <laughs> He didn't say that. He actually says, put it to death. He didn't say, ball it up, put it in the trash can, give it away. <laughs> he said, put it to death. You know, I, have you ever said to yourself, you know, if I don't stop this, this, this is killing me. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's killing me. I, I got to stop this. It's, 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 it's killing me. No, no, think about it. You know that it's killing you, but you haven't decided to kill it. You know that, that this is it's hurting you, but you're trying to live with it. He didn't say, he did not say, you know, find a coping, coping mechanism to learn to live with this thing. He didn't say that. Mm -hmm. He actually said, put it to death. No. Um, and we always have to find ways to, to cope with sin. I'm going to only put out one thing. Please don't, don't be uh, upset with me that I point this out. I still love you afterwards, but it's just a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago, it's in the Maryland past. Um, made gambling legal uh, in uh, the state of Maryland. Uh, and by doing so, you know, they allowed casinos to come in. Now, when they did that, they also uh, instituted uh, a, a gambling anonymous hotline uh, mm -hmm. and therapist to be able to deal with gambling addiction. Now, it, it, it's a scary thing because I'm thinking to myself, you already, before we even put the, the casino in place, before we even lay the foundation for the casino, you're saying to me immediately, we've got to, if we're going to do this, we need to have uh, parameters in place that help those who, who are going to be addicted to gambling because we know this is going to happen. That then says to me, you are more concerned about the revenue coming in than about the individual. You are, you're telling me in advance, this is going to destroy somebody's life. You're saying to me, he's going to destroy somebody's home. You're saying to me that you're going to, you're going to mess up somebody's job, somebody's relationship, and you mess up because uh, you're, you're going to allow gambling to come in. But you would rather have the inflow of money come in than the, the changed life of the individual. So, uh, so since we know they're going to go ahead and gamble, we know they're going to become addicted, then let, let us at least put it around the same place so they can cope with it. But the, the, the reality is, Christ was not saying to you, uh, let me, and, and I'm not against therapy, so this is the wrong way. Uh, he's not saying, let, let me uh, uh, get you with somebody so that you can cope with the, the, the issue that you have. He didn't say that. What he said was, put it to death. Don't live with it. It's killing you. So decide, put that thing to death. In other words, don't keep feeding something that you know is destroying you. How do I do this? Romans 6 11 says, Reckon yourself to be dead to sin, but alive to God. That word for reckon is an accounting term, which means to estimate, to uh, account, to conclude, or to reason. The idea suggests uh, feeding. Uh, don't keep feeding something.
something that you know is killing you. Right? I gotta prove it. Uh, go to Romans 13, uh, verse number 14. Romans the 13th chapter and the 14th verse. So if you're watching online with us, uh, go to Romans the 13th chapter and, and the 14th verse. Romans 13, 14. Uh, it, 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 it tells us, you know, uh, put off, put on uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then uh, look at the, the end of the verse. After you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, it tells you, make no provisions for the flesh uh, to gratify or, or to fulfill its desires. That word provisions is not only the, uh, doesn't say that just to make room, and then it also indicates provisions in the case of uh, a food supply. He's saying, put on Christ. And don't feed your flesh. Put on Christ and don't make room for uh, your flesh to feed your desire. Because the more you keep feeding sin, the stronger sin becomes. The more you keep feeding your uh, your, your your fleshly desires, uh, the the stronger the sin nature becomes. But think about it, please. The less you feed. Uh, the spirit man, uh, the weaker you become. All right. Uh, can you imagine if, if you individually, you ate once a week? Just <laughs> once a week. Now, here's how I know you have a problem with that. Because what we call fast. The same thing. Oh, God. Mm. And, I, uh, and I have to remind you, by the way, be fast. And then I have to say to you, you know, when we fast, and y'all repeat, we are going to 4 p.m. Right with you while I'm not fasting, so don't, don't be thrown in ahead of time. We don't fast tomorrow. <laughs> the reality is, uh, we, we, are, we also get conflicted with, with those kind of things. No. So think about it. If you fasted, if you only ate once a week, initially, the first week, your body will be purging itself of toxins. Get that. But guess what's happening at, at week two, week three? The less protein you have, the, the weaker your muscles become, to the point where your muscles start to deteriorate. The less uh, protein and minerals and enzymes that you have, uh, the more the good bacteria in you start to be overtaken by the, back, the bad bacteria in, in you. So now then, uh, the, the acids in, in your stomach, which always helps to break down uh, your food, turns into bad acids. Now your stomach becomes bloated now. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, those same enzymes that was, that was supposed to help uh, your immunity fight off infections, now it's working against you, and the parasitic enzymes in you start to destroy uh, your body. Therefore, you can't fight off infections like you're used to anymore because uh, you have become weak in your natural body. Now, think about that, please. If that happens to us, uh, in uh, the natural, what happens to us in the spirit? Because Paul tells us in verse 15, it's first the natural, then the spiritual, which means if you only eat uh, of Christ uh, and the word of God once uh, a week, obviously your spiritual muscle is going to deteriorate. You're going to be weaker, therefore you can't fight off sin. And by uh, your spiritual immune system uh, being down, the stuff that you would not normally do, you're going to find yourself doing because you're going to have a weak spiritual immune system. Mm. Therefore, sin, uh, much like a parasite, a parasite in your body, starts to o o overtake you until you're bloated so much uh, with, with sin that now the same thing that you're running from that's supposed to help you, uh, now uh, the thing that prevent you from being destroyed that, that thing is not working inside you any longer because you're getting room for it. So now you're being destroyed by sin. And then you wonder, how come, I don't know why this stuff's not working out for me. I get it, I'm going to tell you why. You're not eating the word of God or you don't have a consistent <laughs> diet of the word. You're not taking in the things of the kingdom of God. Therefore, the things of the world and sin keep overtaking you. That's why you struggle uh, living this life. That's why you struggle with sin. That's why people get on your nerves. Uh, the way that they do. 
That's why you have a short fuse. Uh, that's why you're often bothered by uh, things in life, because you're not taking in the things of the kingdom of God. Therefore, now, your spirit man is dying, and the, the earthly man, the debased man, the sinful nature, keeps on growing. It's the brain. It doesn't care about you living eternally with God. It wants to destroy you, and now you're feeding that thing, and your spirit man constantly dies, and you can't fight the devil any longer. Yeah. And so, uh, we're supposed to reckon ourselves to be dead to sin, but alive uh, uh, under Christ. Uh, consider Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified for Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not, yet not I. It's Christ that, that lives in me. And so, uh, we're not living our life. We're supposed to be living uh, his life. And after all, keep in mind, a dead man can not sin. A dead man does not have the potential uh, to sin because a dead man can do nothing. <laughs> if you're dead to sin, then now uh, you're not reacting to sin. If you're dead uh, to sin, you're not trying to live and participate in sin. You're dead to sin, but you're alive to God. Shall we continue in sin? The grace of God may abound, Romans 6 1 says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin keep living in the same thing that we died to? Yeah. Uh, so when at one time we walked according to this world, but now we should be walking into Christ. We're, we're supposed to put off the lower things uh, and put on the, the higher thing. We should throw all sin away like a dirty, soiled piece of clothing because we have no use for it. What's even more interesting, in Scripture, uh, the word uh, behavior, behavior is often symbolized as a garment. Uh, so how we act uh, is, the, the scripture is, is actually saying to us, how you act is what you're wearing every day. What did you put on today? Your behavior is a garment. Did, did you put on malice today? Did you, did you put on anger today? What, what, did you, how, what are you wearing? You, know, you ever heard someone say, I, I, just, I woke up mad. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or uh, wrong type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, well, then <laughs> go get back here and get on the other side. Get on the other side of it. <laughs> you know, then there should be a, a change. So what I do? Uh, the scripture gives us there six things that we're supposed to put off. So I, I want to talk about those six things. Uh, what are they? The Bible tells us uh, uh, to put away the garment of anger. Since so you wear your anger as a garment, take it off. Don't keep wearing anger on you. The word anger means to provoke, to, to enrage, to become uh, exasperated. Yes, anger is an emotion. And yes, we should be angry, righteous in anger, uh, about things that are, are uh, inhumane, uh, things that demean other people. We should be uh, angry about injustices, but not to the point of sin. Uh, Jesus was angry when he came to the temple and he saw that they were price gouging and extortion. And when he saw that, the Bible says he threw the tables over. Now watch his words. He was not angry because they were selling. He was angry because they were price gouging and extorting the people. He said, my house is supposed to be a house of prayer. He said, but you have made it a den not of merchants. Uh, uh, you made it a den of, of, of thieves. And that's a problem because you're, you're price gouging uh, the people. And so uh, his anger was righteous, not to the point where, where he sinned. The Bible tells us. Be angry, but sin not. Uh -huh. And then it also says, don't let the sun go down on, on, on your wrath. So but be careful with that. But that means that we must be quick to love. We have to have, we have a short list of anger. Be quick to love, quick to forgive, and quick to reconcile. So I'm going to need you to repeat the, uh, these words after me. From this day forward, From this day forward I, will be I will be quick to love, quick to, love, quick to, forgive, quick to forgive, forgive, and quick to reconcile. Quick to quick to reconcile. reconcile. That means don't hold love back. Love people quickly. Love. Uh, that also means don't hold on to stuff and, and just be mad. You know, uh, be quick to forgive. Before they even ask for it, Lord, we're going to in a moment. Uh, before they ask for forgiveness, forgive them before they, before you talk it out. Forgive them. If they never come to you, still forgive them. If you never see eye to eye on it, forgive them. And then not just forgive, but be quick to reconcile. We are given the word of the, 
of reconciliation. We're given the ministry. Our service should be reconciling and bringing you back together. We should not be trying to divide people at all. Uh, we should be bringing harmony one to the other because that is our ministry. That is the word of the uh, believer. And so quick to love, quick to forgive, quick to uh, reconcile. We should cast off the garment of, uh, of wrath, which is uh, rage uh, that sets to, out to uh, have revenge or to avenge of one thing. Uh, if, you, if you've done this before, just keep looking at me and uh, crack a, a small smile, but don't give yourself away uh, too much. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, if, if they do one more thing, I'm going to get them. I'm going to tell them off. You know, they, just, just let them just one, one, one more time. And, 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 you, and you, to the point you start developing the whole scenario in your head on how it's going to play out, no, I, I did say don't, don't, no, I did just say small stuff. Yeah. But uh, the Bible tells us about that. That's, uh, that's uh, our anger has turned to the point of wrath now. Uh, fits of anger, outbursts of anger, uh, uh, rage. But the devil actually exploits anger by intensifying the believer's emotional stress. Uh, uh, in other words, what the adversary wants to do when he knows you're already emotionally stressed, right. he wants to begin to magnify uh, that stress in, in your mind to the point that now you're stewing over it and you can't get it out of your, your mind. You're so upset about it, like you're just, it's just conscious, it's like that gnawing thought uh, that, that, that's there. Uh, and, uh, you know, there may be times when you, you blew it out of proportion, you knew you did, mm -hmm. and you realize later on that uh, I made it bigger than what, what it was. And also, sometimes, your mind will have you feeding in on it, and, and they may not even say that half the stuff you thought about, but you're not, hey, I saw them looking like that. I, I, I know exactly what they were thinking. <laughs> that's what they meant by that. I know they did. And now, so when uh, you add more to it, more to it, and more, uh, to it because now uh, your mind will have you ever thought how much energy it takes to be angry it takes a lot of energy and time to be angry you have to keep that incident so fresh in your heart to your emotions are still at that, at that high level you gotta go sleep with that and wake up with that same like oh. You gotta stay there, you know, which means you gotta keep replaying the incident in, in your mind to the point that so that when you see them or hear them, you're still fresh with it. Yeah. It takes a lot of energy. Your, your brain, every second, has 250,000 thoughts every second. So if you're having 250,000 thoughts every single second, every four seconds, there's one million thoughts that go through your mind every four seconds. A million thoughts. And you're trying to hold them. <laughs> you're, trying to hold them. <laughs> you're holding that one thing that is, are you kidding me? It takes a lot of energy. A lot of energy just to be, it takes a lot of time that you're investing in being angry. Now get this, please. That means it's also, let's prove it that. The more you're angry, the less you can actually pay attention. And, the, and it cuts down your learning curve. Uh, psychologists have proven that when you're angry and you have a conversation, you only hear one fourth of what's being said. <sighs> that means a whole conversation is going on, and three fourths of the information you never even heard what they said. Because you're angry and you're, you just blocked out everything else. How do we know it? You're formulating a response before you even hear what they have to say. You already cut it off. Because you're, you're ready to attack. Yeah. Too much energy, brothers and sisters. And you miss the opportunity to actually learn and to appreciate uh, other things that, that are going on. The Bible tells us, 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 5, love holds hold no record of wrongdoing. Um, 1 Peter 4, 8 says, that love covers a multitude of sin. So further. The Bible also tells us that we are to strip off or take off Malice, which is uh, naughtiness, uh, uh, badness, wickedness, depravity, evil. First Corinthians 15, verse 33 says, Do not be deceived, bad company ruins good morals. That means this, brothers and sisters, you know. Uh, the old cliche was, birds of a feather. You can believe in your heart that 
The people that you're around don't affect you, but you are sadly and grossly wrong. We are constant sponges, and whoever we're around, whatever we're around, often it seeps into us. I'll tell you about this story. Uh, now, we were, uh, and most of you all know, I was raised uh, ultra conservative Christian, ultra conservative. And we, and, I mean, it, it could be sin. If, what, if it wasn't made sin, we made it sin. <laughs> uh, <you know. laughs> well, uh, we were not supposed to. You know, the games that had, when you roll dice, uh, it was rolling dice for sin. So you, you would get to uh, make a little board where you could have a dial that goes around because you couldn't roll dice. That was, Lord of God, I'm telling you. Hey, come on. Yeah. Yes. You know. Um, so, my, my, uh, we, we were told, you, you don't listen to, you know, I grew up in East Tennessee where uh, country music and hard, heavy metal rock, uh, that's what was, was there, you know. And I, uh, I'll admit to you, I like country. You know, <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> I like the acoustic guitar and the banjo. I'm, I'm just sorry. It's just, it's something about this. It's just, it's, just, it's, just, it's pretty cool. Like, to play a banjo, I mean, it, 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 it took, you got three fingers to move so fast that, I mean, you, you got to be something to do that. Uh, but I digress. Uh, but all the way to, uh, on the school, that they largely played heavy metal rock. Now, I don't care for heavy metal rock uh, at all. But, you know, we were, we were taught, you only listen to, to gospel music. Christian. That's it. And so, I'm, since I like music, you know, uh, commercials and, and jingles and, and stuff just stitches me. So, I'm going to school, and I can't, I can't let this get in my head. So, as I'm on the bus, I'm singing the whole way. You know, I'm singing blood songs and this, about the name of Jesus the whole way. Because I can't let this music get into my, into my spirit. So I get it. I'm saying the whole way. The whole way to school. Uh, purposely, intently, drowning out the sound I'm hearing in my ears. How is it when I get to school? I was sitting in class, and when I, when I was usually trying not to listen to uh, on the bus, so I was playing in my head. Yeah. It's because uh, even though I'm sitting there trying to block it out, you know, I didn't have on, you know, we couldn't afford those uh, uh, noise constant headphones that we didn't have back then either, you know. <laughs> but it, so I didn't have that, so I'm, I'm having to block it out of my head. So I'm, I'm in math class and science class, and I'm taking a, 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 a test. And now the songs are playing in my head, and I'm, I'm there, the, the, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I'm casting all kinds of stuff out. You will not have a foothold in my mind. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I realize the reality is that I, I'm in that environment, and although I'm not, I'm purposely trying to abstain from it. Uh, the things that are there are still trying to seep into my mind. My point is, the scripture tells us that bad company ruins good morals. So don't dare tell me that uh, I'm just, I'm just hanging out with them. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not enjoying what they're doing. I'm not participating. What bro says, I need you to understand that bad company, your mind is absorbing information constantly. Bad company ruins good morals. So you might see that you're abstaining uh, that time and this time, but what happens as you keep doing it? Why is it that you're, you keep putting your fences down? Why is it after a while that they'll say, you know, just try it one time? Like, all right, just one time won't hurt. Well, the, the, the truth is, the first time that you uh, were in the environment, you now start putting your fence down. <laughs> and over time, the company of being able to overtake you. Put off, the Bible says. Slander, which is evil talking. Uh, insults, but which is talk. Uh, we're not supp supposed to allow corrupt communication out of our mouth. We're supposed to build each other up. The Bible actually says, don't call your brother rocker, which means fool. All right? That means something like this. You know, I, I don't call him a fool. Well, if you're saying, call him an idiot, uh, <laughs> you're saying you're stupid, you're saying stuff like, you know, there are a few fries short of a half a meal, or, or you know, all, all her little girls are at home, or the elevator that goes to the top floor. It's the same thing. Yeah. Same thing. You just use another word, another way of saying it. So, so you're not just saying the actual word for fool. And think about it. Uh, why is Christ so against this? Because that person, regardless of how you thought, how foolish what they did, 
they are making the image and the likeness of God. And when you speak against uh, who, who they are, you are defaming God's creation. Yeah. He tells us not to do so. So don't, don't say that. It also means don't gossip. Uh, he tells us uh, put off obscene talk, which is uh, a vow uh, conversation. Uh, not just uh, profanity, and the saints should not use profanity. Amen. 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 <laughs> saints should not be using, not, not even in, indirect, you know, profanity. So you're, you're trying to find a substitute for the F word, and so you say on foot instead of saying, hello, it's still, are you here? Yeah. Uh, we don't, we don't uh, use substitution for profanity uh, either. Uh, we don't involve ourselves in uh, uh, speaking uh, grossly. The Bible tells us that. Uh, we're supposed to speak uh, helpful and wholesome words and not something that is unhelpful. Uh, okay? uh, we're supposed to cast off the guard of life. Uh, it's a misrepresentation of the truth. And to Jesus is truth. You are misrepresenting him. So we're supposed to cast off uh, the garment of lying and in all these uh, make provision uh, for the flesh uh, put on uh, Christ. Let's go into the last section, uh, and that's verses uh, 10 through 17. So if we're going to take off, we need to know what to, what to put on. Verse 10 uh, for ESV. And have uh, put on the new self, which is being renewed, being renewed, uh, in knowledge of the image of its creator. Uh, here there is neither, nor there is not Greek or Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, scientist, slave, uh, free, but Christ is all and uh, in all. Put on then, as God's chosen, uh, chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Watch this verse here. Bearing with one another. That means put up with each other. And... If one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so also forgive them. And then Paul's here. Look at that verse there. He says, put up with each other. And if you have a complaint, what does he need to do? Yeah. Forgive them. He didn't say, go talk it out. He didn't say go confront them. He said if you have a complaint against someone, forgive them. How can I do that? He said the same way Christ forgave you, you forgive them. Let me help you. Did Jesus ever sit you down and say, well, I want, I want to talk to this group. Before I forgive you, I want to talk it out with you hurt me. So let, let's just sit down and I want to talk it to you. Because I can't close this chapter of my life. I can't move on. Have yeah. Jesus ever said, I, I, want to, I want to close this chapter, of, but I got to talk to you first because I can't move on. That's what you do. <coughs> no, you never had that conversation with God. <laughs> he didn't sit you down and say, well, I, 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 give me all the details. I want, I want to know everything. I don't care how painful it is. Tell me it all. <laughs> he didn't do that. Yeah. He said, if you have a complaint against somebody, first of all, put up with them. Ooh. If you have a complaint against them, forgive them. How? Ah. Same way Christ forgave you, then you forgive them. Yeah. It's funny. People, uh, I got this reaction at noon, they were like, mm. <laughs> at 5 they were like, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Y'all were like, oh, wow, yeah. It's, just, it's amazing. It's amazing. So we, we come up with a lot of theories that, that they actually go against with the principles of Scripture. Verse 14. All, all, all of these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, uh, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, uh, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. So, if we're going to put off, we've got to obviously put something uh, on. Uh, the new man, having a new mindset, must have uh, new garments to put on, in the case being invested with uh, clothing. Uh, and so, uh, we must clothe our, ourselves uh, with Christ. We must be wrapped up uh, 
in him. Some of you remember years ago in church, uh, they sang a song, uh, wrapped up, tied up, uh, tangled up in Jesus. Uh, and so uh, you should be, as we all, should be wrapped up in him. We should wear Jesus like a garment, but we should also, as the song says, be so intertwined with him that we are inseparable from uh, him uh, uh, as well. We must ingratiate ourselves in his holy nature and his holy character. In other words, we should be fully satisfied with who he is in his nature and living this life. Uh, what do you mean, Pastor? You should be happy and completely satisfied being saved. You should not be a miserable saved because you're scared of going to hell and you're afraid of missing heaven. You should be completely satisfied with the idea of living this life and taking on his character because you just absolutely love him. To the point that if there were no heaven at all, you still decide to be saved. To the point that if no, if, if no hell ever existed, you would still choose this life because you realize that he is the love of your life. And now your heart is so enraptured in, in him that hell doesn't matter to you anymore. Heaven doesn't matter to you anymore because you just love him. Now, hear me, please. Uh, yes, heaven and hell exist. I'm not saying that at all, so please don't take it. <laughs> you know, no, 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 I'm not saying that at all. What I'm going to tell you is that that should not be your focal point. You should not be saved because you're hell scared. Amen. You should be saved because I just love him. him. I just want to be with him, you know, and not, uh, I don't feel confined by uh, being saved. You actually find the liberty and the joy that Christ provides for you in living uh, this life. And you really figure out this is the best life where I have abundant life and eternal life is his life living in him. Uh, so then, uh, where are we close? And, and as the first few verses gave us what to put off, uh, verse 12 through 14 tells us what to uh, put on. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Bible actually gives us eight things we're supposed to be uh, clothed with. We're supposed to be clothed with the Holy Spirit. We should be clothed with the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be clothed with immortality. We should be clothed with the new man. We should be clothed with the nature of God. We should be clothed with the armor of light. We should be clothed with the armor of God. We should be clothed in love. Uh, metaphorically, spiritually speaking, what did you put on today? What did you wear intentionally uh, at the, out of the house today? Uh, you should be wearing as a garment uh, the nature uh, of God to the point that you decided, I'm wearing love today. And so, uh, as we, well, we see your clothes. We, we know, uh, uh, just look at, at Sebastian and, and uh, Johnny's clothes, but they both have on Nike shirts. How do I know that? The, the, the emblem just stands out, and we know it's Nike. They probably had no idea that they both have on Nike shirts. Uh, but uh, uh, they got on the, both have on uh, the, the Nike shirt. The emblem lets us know what kind of shirt it is. Uh, so when, we, when they're walking, anyone who knows a Nike symbol I immediately knows. That is a, a Nike shirt. Are you wearing love so that when people approach you, they already know that that's love right there? Mm. They have on. Uh, did you put on mercy today? Did you put on grace today? Did you, did you put on forgiveness today? So when you went around people, that you intentionally decided, I'm forgiven. I'm not walking around being mad at folks today because what happened. I'm wearing forgiveness like a garment. And so when I talk to them and, and, and act with them, I'm going to forgive them because I'm wearing forgiveness as my, it is my protective clothing is how I identify. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. You wear uniforms at times when you, you are uh, in, in the military or you're in a service job. You have a, and your, your, your uniform lets us know who you are. Yeah. In ministry, there, there are, are, are clerical uh, garments that, that just immediately let people know, you know that, hey, so-and-so is a, a minister, whether you have on the uh, the cassock and shimmy with the robes, or you wearing the uh, the fuzzy uh, collar. It, it's just a, a uniform that it means you know. Oh, so and so is. Did you put on Jesus today? That wherever you go, that and you, I mean, intentionally got up and decided, I'm wearing Jesus today. I'm gonna put him on like a garment. So when I, I go out, people see him on my my. I'm not I'm not talking about knowing scriptures. I'm talking about actually living. The scriptures. Uh, so we're going to put on new self, which is uh, in knowledge, uh, which means in you don't put on the new man uh, accidentally. You put on the, the new man on purpose. It is intentional. 
I'm going in love intentionally. This is not a, a for, for, for show. This is purposely. I, I'm doing this by knowledge. And day by day, uh, that new self is being renewed after it's created. I love this. That means that the, the new self is constantly having updates about the creator every single day. Today I was in my phone and uh, I went on a, a, a finance app of mine and as I went on that finance app, it said that at the top, you know, uh, that this version of the app will expire soon. If you want to enjoy all its features, update immediately. And I thought, whoa, how time this is for, for this lesson. You know, uh, the reality is, you know, uh, Christ is jealous. You're being renewed daily in the, in the knowledge of your Creator. Did you decide to update yourself today? <laughs> you should have had a hard update today. Not a soft one. I mean, uh, down in the core of who you are, uh, there should have been a hard update so that when you got up today and you were walking throughout the day, now get it. You sing songs like, you know, uh, and you're quoting uh, Lamentations 3, uh, you know, great is this thing, but it's morning by morning, new mercies we see. And we love having his new mercies, but what about your new mercy? <laughs> you want his new mercy for your life, but what about your mercy provided towards other people? Morning by morning, we just see new mercy coming from you. Morning by morning, we should see new forgiveness come. Morning by morning, we should see fresh love coming for you, which means that you have to be intentional. Okay? Must be uh, intentional. Let's get into uh, the things that we uh, got to, that we got to put on, uh, because uh, if we don't, we won't be acceptable. We'll give you the description, and then we're, we're going to uh, end this uh, here after we give you the garments. Uh, Matthew 22, 1 through 14. Uh, when you get home, please, I implore you, uh, read this text. Matthew, the 22nd chapter, verses 1 through 14. Again, when you get home, please, 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 uh, read this. Again, Matthew 22, verses 1 uh, through 14. The text. It talks about a, a, a master who had a, at a wedding feast. And in the wedding feast, uh, he invited individuals to come, but he provided garments for the wedding. And uh, that meant he provided the food, he reserved the seat, he invited them to come, and he gave them clothes to wear. So that when they came, they were wearing attire that was suitable for the occasion. All right? So then uh, the master comes in, the wedding feast was set, and he walks in, and he sees people sitting there who don't have on the right garments. And he says, friend, how did you get in here without the right garment on? And then uh, the, the man that goes out, bind him head and foot. And take him out. Uh, why? Was he dressed? Yes. He was not flashing the people there uh, at the banquet. The problem was uh, he had a government provided. He just chose to wear his own. And the master said, well, uh, there was a, a, a certain prerequisite of attire that was required for you to come in here. I gave you a garment. I didn't ask you to, to buy your own. I didn't ask you to use your own. I provided clothing for you to wear, and you're not wearing the clothes that I provided for you. Therefore, you are unacceptable. Hear me, hear me, hear me. This text is not talking about uh, you coming to church with a suit and a tie on, a three-piece, you know. It's not talking about, you know, ladies wearing hats and, and the high heels. Uh, that wasn't even in the scripture. Oh, I don't know how to wear we got for that. I'm not crazy. Is that that's your opinion anyway? It has nothing to do uh, with our, our day uh, and time. It deals with the spirituality of the believer. Christ has given you garments to wear. Why aren't you wearing his garments? <laughs> Which means that when you stand before him daily and you don't have on his garments, you wonder why you're not being accepted. Some stuff is not working out, glory to God, in your life because you keep asking him for, to do stuff for you and you show up with the wrong garments on. <laughs> and you say, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me. But you weren't angry when you walk in. You say, Lord, bless me, Lord, bless me. And you're wearing unforgiveness when you come in. You're, under, you're frustrated because you're saying, well, I don't know why uh, you know, the, these uh, blessings are being blocked in my life. Uh, but when you, when you come in, uh, you're wearing sinfulness. 
And God is saying, well, you're, not, you're not even wearing holiness. You're not even set, set apart unto me. Uh, you, your mind is double, and you, you want me to work for you, but you're not willing to put on the clothes I provide for you. And so uh, we need to know what does he require? What, what spiritual garments should we be wearing on a daily basis? The Bible tells us we should put on the garment of holiness. We're told, not optional, if you want to be holy, do it. It actually said, be holy. Now, I used the same example in, in the previous classes today, so I'll use it as well. This lectern uh, that we have here is a musical stand. It, this is seen in uh, I mean, thousands of concerts halls and thousands of band rooms. And some people uh, have this in, in the house and they practice with this. Well, now, we bought this lecture and brought it in here. We, you, we, the purpose was to be used exclusively uh, for God. There are millions of lecterns that are like this. This music, millions of, of God, billions of other people are out there in the world. I'm choosing to live my life consecrated unto you. Not two weeks out of the year when we go on consecration and you're fasting. No, no, no. Uh, what you're saying is that uh, every day of my life, I'm choosing to have my life set apart just for you. My mind, yours, my life, yours, I'm choosing to, to be exclusively yours, and I'm wearing holiness as a sign of my consecration and being set apart every day. Next one. We should put on compassion. We should wear compassion. Compassion as, as uh, uh, the Lord is full compassion. He's in the heart. Uh, he shows pity and sympathy. So since Christ is compassion towards us, we must be what, show compassion towards other people. We should wear compassion as a garment. We must put on kindness, which is uh, being kind and good and useful and helpful and gentle uh, and sweet. Uh, sweet people are nice and nice people smile. <laughs> I'll give it to you again. <laughs> Sweet people are nice, and nice people smile. No, y'all didn't get it because you didn't do it. <laughs> Sweet people are nice, and nice people smile. There we go. Thank you. That's a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, on Sunday, when I was at Alabama preaching, and, and, and the Bible tells us no many times to be kind, uh, the pastor, I was talking about a fig tree, and uh, you know, like the fruit it bears, the leaf and the fruit again, and, and uh, the pastor's over, uh, she's over there, she, she's jumping, carrying on, she's up, uh, all this. I did not know why she was so excited, but she's up, I mean, she was just, oh, she was into the message and, and jumping up, moving around, like, whoa, oh, well, this is all right. Um, so, altar calls over, she gets the mic, and I mean, she is like, she's, she is. Uh, amped up, you know. So I'm, not, uh, I'm looking like, wow, she, 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 she's really on fire today, you know. And she, she's, she, oh, uh, uh, he just blessed my spirit. Uh, you all know, and she says, I'm a host of course list. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> and she says, she walks over to me and tells me, I'm a host, I'm a host of course list. I'm the director of all of the horticulture for uh, the city of Birmingham, Alabama. She tells me, if it comes out the ground in Birmingham, I'm over it. I'm like, that's deep. Mm -hmm. She then says this to me. She said, uh, Doctor, did you know if you have, if a bee uh, has pollen from a, a, a lemon tree and it doesn't get all that pollen off the lemon, uh, 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 from, from the lemon tree and it goes over to the orange tree uh, and the orange is supposed to be sweet, uh, if the pollen from the lemon tree, because the bee didn't get uh, uh, rid of all of it, it will now make a sweet orange bitter? I'm like, ooh, got to preach right there. Now, get it, please. Uh, bad company uh, ruins good morals. So you can feel like I'm missing, I'm missing where I'm like, I don't bother nobody. But how do you know, glory, uh, that the pollen of somebody else's life is not ruining the sweetness of your own life? And you found yourself becoming bitter, glory, because you kept hanging out. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we must wear kindness as a garment to ensure the fact that we stay uh, not just uh, useful, not just helpful, uh, but gentle and also sweet. We must wear uh, the garment of humility, which is submissiveness and teachability. Uh, you must find yourself being submissive 
constantly. You must find yourself uh, being teachable. And the only way to do this is uh, it uh, humility operates by the system of honor. When you learn to honor others, uh, you'll find yourself being teachable. When you learn to honor and give honor in every and all uh, situations, uh, you'll find yourself learning and gaining more because you demonstrate uh, humility. You must also put on the, the garment of meekness, which is being tender and considered. The idea of, of, of meekness in, in the Greek is a, a medium between two extremes. We're not right-wing or left-wing. We're not conservative nor liberal. True Christians, brothers and sisters, are meek. Glory to God. Uh, true Christians are not conservative, neither are they liberal. True Christians are meek because it's the meek that shall inherit the earth. That's what the Bible says. So we don't walk around uh, adhering to, uh, uh, I'm a conservative, uh, I'm a liberal. You are drawing lines in the sand uh, at which now to launch grenades at the other party to suggest that somehow you are more free than them or holier than the next person. Uh, you want to demonstrate uh, meekness, realizing my, my attempt to be righteous, but I also know that in me, that in my flesh dwells no good things, so I can't be righteous on my own. My righteousness is, is him. So I must walk uh, with him constantly, not trying to show how holy I am or not trying to find a, a way to get, to get away with everything uh, in life. I'm walking simply with him, knowing that he keeps me safe every single day. Amen. Walking and wearing meekness. We must uh, put on the garment of patience, which is long-suffering. That means uh, after you put up with it, then put up with it some more. When you're tired of that, put up with it some more. When you're sick of that, Put up with some more, and when you're done with that, put up with it some more. When you had, you've had all you could stand, and put up with it some more. Yeah, because patience is long suffering. Now, let me help you, because I hear a lot of people say, "I got, you know, I got to pray for me. I got a short fuse." This is just for you, okay? This is just for you, my short fuse people. Uh, patience, long suffering is the fruit of the spirit. That means if your fuse is short. You're not taking time in the spirit. Because the more you're in the spirit of God, the longer your fuse becomes. Yeah. Your fuse gets longer in the spirit. The, 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 the more you spend time in, in, in because it's the fruit of the spirit. So when you, you grow in Christ, the longer your fuse becomes. So now you're able to put up with more things than we were before, which is uh, also the only government of forbearance. Forbearance is uh, treating people with respect and purpose. It's simply understanding that, that yeah, they're different, they may be different, they may think differently, but I'm still going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to respect them. I'm, going to, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not going to demean them and think that, that they are beneath me. I'm going to forbear. The Bible tells us, uh, uh, put up with it, bear with one another. We're supposed to put on the garment of forgiveness. We must forgive whatever the Greek agreements. Forgiveness. Uh, and we learned it a moment ago. Uh, as we forgive, we forgive them, them the same way that Christ has forgiven us. We must wear the garment of love. Uh, that is, that the selfless kind of love that has no prerequisites whatsoever. It is an unconditional uh, kind of love. It's a kind of love that doesn't look for anything in return. Mm. You know, we say something like this. God's looking for your prayers. Oh, God bless you. Let me tell you this. If you never praise God, it doesn't change who he is. He's still God. Mm -hmm. yeah. He doesn't have a, a, a inferior accomplice. I don't know why they won't praise me. I'm going to do it. No, bruh. Is it, it's just your benefit by praising him. You're better off by doing that. Uh, you, the veil is off of your eyes. Now you see he's, he's the more you praise him, the more you realize how awesome he is. That helps you out. You know, you're not making God bigger by because you praise him. Oh, God bless us. Uh, so then, our love should be with, with our people. If they never love you back, still love. If you don't are looking for from them, still, I can't keep investing because they don't love me. 
At some point in time, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to be out. <laughs> Wear love like a garment. Now, think about this. Um, Christ is in a relationship with you. Has he got a return on you yet? Have you, have you given him anywhere nearly what you should have? Yeah. Love without prerequisites. Uh, wear the garment of peace. Always be seeking to bind together. Bring harmony with one another. Wear the garment of thankfulness. It doesn't matter what's happening. In everything, give thanks. It doesn't have to be great. Just be grateful. Wear uh, uh, thankfulness as a, a garment. Uh, wear the word of God. Uh, as a, a garment. And the more you wear uh, the Word of God, uh, the more the Word of God uh, finds itself becoming, uh, or you becoming in the Word of God, and you're growing richly in the Word of God. And when you grow in the Word, the more wisdom you get. If you wear the Word, or in other words, live out the Word daily, you'll find your wisdom growing. You'll find understanding. You won't even have to try. Your wisdom grows because you're just wearing the word like it. I'm not talking about uh, quoting scriptures because anybody can quote it, but that's not how you to live it. <coughs> Wear it like a garment. And when you do so, then uh, you can teach others, encourage others, uh, you can admonish others. You, you're able to give instructions, you're able to uplift, you're able to give advice to other people. The, 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 the big word for counsel is nuthetic. Uh Nuthetic actually indicates advice off the law. Glory to God. So when you are giving counsel, your counsel should be based off of the law of God. I don't know what Freud said. I don't know how, what Maslow thinks. Uh, your advice should come from the word. Now, get it. Uh, you might uh, give advice because uh, that's what Big Mama used to tell me. Yeah. And, and Papa said this. Mm -hmm. you know. And you're giving advice. Uh, but your, your advice should rather come from the Word of God, because that is always accurate. It never fails. Timeless. Uh, last thing, you have a choice. You gotta decide, what are you gonna do? You know, um, either wear the old man or wear the new man. But whatever you do, you know, do it, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna live for Christ, do it for His glory and not for your own. Don't be holy and say, you know, we're the only ones that, that's holy left. Nobody else but, but us. We're going we're gonna to hold up the blood stained banner. Bro, sis, as you have decided you know, to self proclaim your holiness above everybody else, you also realize you had your reward right there. Yeah. Uh, your, your desire to live for Him should never go to your own glorification. You should want to promote Christ so that others might see the light in you and glorify your Father which is in, in heaven. We have a whole lot of, um, of in-church pep rallies. <laughs> we promote how great we are to each other. And the world never sees our light. Let your light shine before me. And they miss you. And the, they'll come running and they'll want to know what we got to decide what we're going to do. Simply put, you got to decide. Take off the old man and put on the new man. Let's pray. Father, thank you for that. You're amazing. We love you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. Our prayer, our prayer today is, Lord, that you will help us to take the old man off and put on the new man. We get it, Lord. You're not going to do it for us. You're not going to force us to do this. It's a choice that we must decide to do. We have to decide to put to death uh, the sin in our life. We have to decide that you already freed us from sin. You already died for our sin. You already liberated us. You already gave us power. You gave us power over sin. We got to decide now to, to, for once and for all, separate with sin. We got to decide not to feed it in our lives any longer. So I thank you, Father, for what you're doing. And it is my prayer, Lord, that we will learn to intentionally decide. We're going to wear. You're like a garment. We're going to wear righteousness. We're going to wear love and forgiveness and peace and, and grace and mercy uh, like garments. Father, I pray that tonight that somebody decides they're, they're going to put on love tonight. Father, that somebody decides they're going to put on grace tonight. They're going to put on forgiveness tonight. I, I, I pray that someone tomorrow morning when they wake up, they're choosing, Lord, 
uh, to put on the garment of forgiveness. And they're going to wear grace all day long. They're going to wear reconciliation all day. The way your nature, God, constantly. And thank you for what you're doing in us, which will be accomplished through us. May your name be praised, Lord, today and evermore. May the world come to know who you are. And the world say yes to you because we have said yes to you. And we're shining our, our light throughout the world. We give you thanks. We'll bless you always. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's bring this tithe and to present with our offering. While we're preparing to do so, uh, go ahead and do the eloquent announcements so you know exactly what uh, they are. Uh, by way of announcements, the, our, our MOOC campaign is continuing, and uh, we're having uh, walks several times a week. If you're in the Bel Air area, on Mondays at 6.30, walking at Cedar Lane in Bel Air. On Monday and Wednesday, you're in the Aberdeen area at 5 p.m. You're walking at the uh, Aberdeen High School. Or if you're in the Havagas area, Monday and Wednesday at 6.30, you're marching, you're walking at the Havagas Promenade. And on Saturdays, uh, here in Edgewood, at 8 a.m., you're walking at the Edgewood High School. On August the 4th, is Friendship Day. Friendship Day. Uh, the, the purpose of that day is to encourage each of us to be friendly. Uh, we encourage you, of course, every Sunday, by the way, to invite friends to church. But obviously, this day is designed to make a big deal about your friends, uh, to reach out purposely. Friends you haven't talked to in a long time, just friends you can do all the time, just make a big deal about your friends. Be friendly, even if you don't know, just uh, it's a day of uh, friendship purposely. August the 7th is our next group fast day. August the 12th, 21st, probably August 21st, is simulation. That will take place here uh, on the 21st at 12 noon. Uh, the 18th to the 25th is Love Week. We're asking you during that week uh, three hours, three hours of community service. Be a blessing to the community around you and, and volunteer three hours of community service. And on the 25th is our is Praise Fest. I'm encouraging you during the Praise Fest. Um, invite someone, bring someone out. It's going to be a wonderful time. It starts at 10 o'clock that day. We always have great times uh, during our our praise fest. Continue to pray one for the other. Uh, pray for uh, Deacon O'Neill Schultz as he is recovering. Uh, pray for Sister Tanya Travers uh, as she'll have a procedure on uh, on Friday next week. Pray for uh, Brother uh, Anthony Johnson as he's doing on, on Tuesday. And uh, uh, pray for Sister Wendy Hinton, uh, Hinton's daughter, who is, who is recovering uh, as well as for other uh, people and so, uh, but keep each other in prayer as well. I'm going to ask you uh, today, uh, as you know, sometimes when I'm, when I'm, when I'm gone, sometimes the, the finances, they, they do fall, and we were significantly low uh, this past Sunday. Uh, normally we're in the six um, and above. This Sunday we're at like 37, and that's like unheard of. That is, uh, that is like one of the, um, yeah, it, it puts us behind severely. And so we're asking you to make a sacrifice today because we need to, we don't want to get behind as we've gotten a, or get ahead. Uh, as in your own house, when you fall behind, it's hard to catch back up. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens if you magnify uh, your house bills by 10 or more. Uh, you understand what's happening in the church. And so uh, if you can sacrifice today, um, $20, $2, $100, that would be awesome. Get us back on track. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys uh, so much. Uh, of course, uh, continue to pray that God will be able to strengthen and move forward. Uh, also, don't forget, uh, if you'd like to go with us on uh, Thursday, um, the information is on the table. It's the War Convocation, which is uh, Daniel Justin Sr., uh, and uh, it's the, the uh, Thursday service at uh, 7 p.m. It's a high holidays communion service, so we invite you to come out and be a part We'd love to see you there. I uh, appreciate your support. Those who are watching and been watching on uh, Facebook Live, Information was uh, uploaded there as well, so you just scroll through and you can find information as to locate We would love to hang out with you uh, during uh, that time. I believe that's all. Uh, let's stand. Uh, we're going home. So, for the Lord's time, if there's any decision, I will bring up this one. Like everyone, you offer their hand or raise it. Lord, probably thank you for your gift. We bring to you your time. We bring to our offer. Our request is this. Blessed indeed, increase our word. Let your hand be on the gifts of evil. We bring you honor and praise. And we'll bless you and keep you constantly set up for you. Grace unto you. Do this count of you. Peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.